Good morning. It's uh, Friday, uh, May the 15th already, and I just wanted to share with you uh, uh, some thoughts. There's a passage in, uh, in 1 Kings chapter 19. It deals with Elijah, the great prophet of God. He's just uh, uh, finished a great victory on Mount Carmel, uh, the drought that God had brought upon the Israelites. It's finally ended. And uh, in, in this setting of great victory for God and his people, and certainly for the prophet Elijah, uh, comes some, uh, some rain in a different form. Uh, a woman named Jezebel, the, the wife of the king, uh, she uh, attacks uh, Elijah, uh, tells him she's going to put him to death. And uh, you find that uh, 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 Elijah, uh, he, re he reacts and responds uh, Poorly to it, he flees from her, and uh, and takes off. But at any rate, in 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 First Kings chapter nineteen, the Bible says, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that. He arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. He, he requests to die. I, I do know this. Um, we are all vulnerable uh, to discouragement, and discouragement can certainly lead unto depression. And in these days that we live in, there is great discouragement. I mean, you look around, and, and uh, there's the constant, continual threat of the virus. Uh, there's all the fallout that's come because of the virus. Uh, just this week, um, uh, for example, uh, with the unemployment rate spiraling upwards, uh, we're, it's projected that we're going to reach a, a rate of 35% unemployment, uh, just incredible numbers. Um, uh, there's going to be an impact if, if that reality comes to pass. Uh, I read just this morning that, uh, that all of the steak and shake restaurants, uh, well, not all of them, but a great number of them have closed. Uh, they're not going to reopen. Uh, also, Applebee's uh, has, uh, has gone under. Uh, Logan's in the past, and so, uh, and, and those are just just a sampling. Um, if things continue like they are, there are projections that only the the, the super huge retailers are going to remain. Um, so, so there are a lot of things to be concerned about. And if we're not, um, if if we're not uh, focused on the right things, we will get discouraged. And then, coupled with all of that, you know, you think about the the reality of of human life and and the fact that. Uh, uh, it is a dangerous time, and so, so there are a lot of things to be discouraged about, and, and even for believers, even for Christians. And, and so you find that, uh, that Elijah, he's dealing uh, with discouragement as well. And, and it's interesting to me that uh, the discouragement, it comes from the, the message uh, of the queen. Uh, he listened, he's listening to information from the wrong source. Now, there is not a shortage of information uh, in this time we're living in, there is a shortage of information that, that coincides. <laughs> There's a shortage of agreeable information uh, that we have. Uh, it just depends on what source you listen to. And uh, if we gather information from the wrong source, it is going to bring discouragement. He was getting his information from his adversary. And if we get all of our information from our adversary, and please understand me, the world is our adversary in one sense. It is controlled uh, by by the uh, the prince of the power of the air, and and if we follow the mindset and the mentality and and to the value system of the world, uh, it is leading us in the wrong direction. Uh, we will end up discouraged. We will end up discontent. It will lead unto depression. We live in a time where where suicide rates are are ramping up, and uh, uh, where all sorts of other aspects are are taking place because of that. Uh, but you find that there was one thing that got Elijah out of this discouragement. Uh, when he got to Mount Horeb, uh, when he got back to a place where, uh, where God had spoken to Moses and the children of Israel, because Horeb was one of the peaks of, of Sinai, uh, when he got back to a place where God could speak, 
uh, he was able to get out of his discouragement. And, and the reality is he, he went back to a place where he could receive the word of God. That's where Moses had received it. And, and quite frankly, we just need to get back to a place where we're listening to the word of God. We're listening to what God has to say unto us. Uh, there were some, some things that this discouragement uh, produced in his life, some uh, some things that he had to contend with and deal with. And and uh, most folks think it's just, a, just an emotional down, but, but it's far from that. There are far-reaching effects. Uh, when we're discouraged and, and, and heading down that pathway, uh, we lose our ability to cope. Here he is. He's running from one woman that he easily could have handled. Um, I, I know this. When we're discouraged, our problems look a lot bigger than they actually are. But God's still on the throne. Whatever's going on in life for us right now, and certainly in the, in the days of Elijah, God was still on the throne. He hadn't gone anywhere. Uh, again, uh, he took care of the prophets of Baal. He certainly could have handled Jezebel uh, for Elijah. We lose the ability to be rational. She said, I'm going to kill you. And then you find that, that he runs from her because he doesn't want her to kill him. But then just a couple verses later in verse 4, he's saying, he's saying God, kill me. Well, well, if he really wants to be killed, then, then just stop running. Jezebel will take care of that for him. But, but he's losing the ability to be rational. And, and people do things that don't make sense when they're discouraged. We begin to withdraw from others when we're discouraged. Uh, in verse 3, he left the Israelites. He, he left behind seven, uh, a remnant of 7,000. He, he leaves his servant behind. He goes on uh, further by himself into the wilderness. He got away from everyone else and everything else and, and uh, just got away from, from those who could help him and those could be a that could be a blessing to him. Uh, but, but here's what I know. If, we're, if we find ourselves in discouragement and we're involved in panic and fear is overtaking us, uh, there, there is a remedy. Uh, we just need to get back to the mountaintop. We need to get back to Oreb where he went and let God speak. We need to get back into God's word. Uh, he asked, uh, he, he received the new touch in verse 5. There was an angel that came and, and, and touched him. And, and, and sometimes we just need a new touch from God. We need to ask for that new touch. Uh, sometimes it's just as simple as recommitting ourselves, rededicating, our, uh, rededicating ourselves unto the Lord. And, and, and all of us at some point need to do that. David did, Elijah did, Moses did, Joseph did, Paul, Peter, John, all of them at some point had to rededicate themselves unto God. And if that's true of them, how much truer of us? Uh, there are times we just need to rededicate. And, and so we, uh, we need to do that. We need to realize that we're not the only one facing what's going on. There are others involved in the same battle that we are. You know, uh, Elijah made the mistake of saying, I'm the only one that's left. Everybody else is, is gone. I'm the only one that's still standing. And, and God has to remind him, hey, listen, you're not the only one. There are 7,000 that haven't bowed the knee to Baal. Obadiah has been hiding 100 prophets uh, in the caves, and, and Jezebel wanted to kill them as well. We're never the only one. There are always others involved with us. And we need to realize the problem doesn't have to be removed in order to go on to victory. You know, it's interesting. If you study out the scriptures, you find that Jezebel, she outlived Elijah, at least Elijah's time on the earth. We know he was taken up by a chariot uh, into heaven. Uh, but, but she was still alive when he went into heaven. And yet, after this, she was never a problem to Elijah again. And so the problem or the, the individual or whatever it happens to be doesn't have to be removed in order for us to function and to go on and to be able to do the things uh, that God would have us to do. Uh, she, she ends up dying much later. Elisha is the prophet uh, of Israel at that point. You know, if you stay in your discouragement, a cave of despair awaits you. That's where he ends up, in a cave uh, in verse 9. It just gets worse, and it gets worse. But here's good news. Elijah recovered, and uh, God used him again. Look at verse 15. It says, And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria, Syria, and Jehu the son of Nimshi shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel-Mahola Abel shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room or in thy stead. And so God uses him again to anoint two kings and a prophet. Here's what I know. Discouragement is real. It's dangerous, but recovery is possible. And you and I, we need to quit listening to all the sources 
that, that are contrary to us. But we need to listen to the source of our God. If you get your information from him, if you'll delve into the word of God, if you'll let God speak and rededicate yourself to him, uh, you'll find you're going to be a whole lot more encouraged than you are discouraged. It seems like every bit of good news that comes out in these days, there's always somebody who's throwing a bucket of water upon it. And, and, and I, I, it just makes it difficult to know. Difficult to know. But I know this. God's word's true. And whatever he says, you and I can stand upon. So regardless of what you hear around you, let's just keep our eyes upon the Lord and keep ourselves in the word of God and let God be our encouragement. Father, thank you. Thank you that you love us the way that you do. Thank you for the way you encourage us and strengthen us. I'm grateful for your leadership and direction. Lord, you never fail. You're always faithful. I know, Lord, there are a lot of hurting people out there. Uh, Lord, there are a lot of people hurting physically, but I know there are a lot of people that are hurting emotionally. Lord, I know a lot of folks have, have lost jobs, and we're living in a, in a time where that's difficult. Lord, I know folks have lost loved ones, and, and how tragic and, and sorrowful that is. And, and Lord, I know we live in a time of uncertainty, and Lord, we really don't know where things are going or how things are going to turn out. But that doesn't matter, Lord. We know you, and we know that you know all things. And I, I pray you'd, you'd help us to keep our perspective right. Help us, Lord, to keep our, our focus and our gaze upon you. And uh, Lord, I, I pray that uh, you would be the source of our information. You'd be the source of our strength. Lord, help us to, to take our cues from you. And uh, Lord, help us to follow you faithfully. Lord, regardless of what's happening around us, you're still on the throne. And Lord, your will is still the same as it's always been. So I do pray, God, you'd help us to keep our, our focus upon you. Help us to be encouraged in you. And we're just going to praise you and thank you for all that you do. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your plans for our life. They haven't changed. They haven't altered. Uh, Lord, you still have an ultimate plan, and we'll be victorious in the end, and we're grateful for that. Again, Lord, thank you for the day. Help us to be faithful in it, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day. We love you, and so does the Lord. And uh, just looking forward to what God's going to do in the days ahead. God bless you.